Hello, I'm Debs Kay. Thanks so much for joining me and welcome to my little studio. Okay, so today I'm going to be sharing with you a time-lapse version of um, how I painted this little scene here, um, which I called a French view. Um, and I was lucky enough to wake up to this view many moons ago when I lived in my very first French home. Um, so I've got the photographic reference. If you're welcome to download it if you if you like, no problem at all, and you can have a go at painting. Um, now I've chosen this particular scene today um, as an example of how you can create a, a very green landscape and uh, make it a little bit more interesting. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. I hope you learn something along the way. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you do, um, and uh, let's get painting. So let's have a quick look at the colours and things I used for this. Quite nice and simple on this little one. It's a nice little simple scene. Um, very green, obviously just many greens and blues there. Um, but you've got a few warmer colours there. I wanted to create a nice warm feeling um, to this painting. So for my underpainting, I used sort of like uh, the red family uh, using, you know, going up from a sort of dark burgundy red through to your sort of nice russeties and a nice soft peachy apricot. Um, but stop, pause the video if you want to have a look um, and as I say choose something along similar lines from your own palettes. So let's get to some painting. Okay well the first thing as you can see I sort of like did myself a very quick outline sketch there um, just very big rough basic shapes there. Um, now in the background I've decided to change it up just a little bit. I'm going to ignore the, the, the barn at the corner of the picture there and I'm also going to introduce sort of like some grassy patches in between all those trees in the distance there. Um, I just felt it was a little bit of a heavy block of the same sort of colour um, and you do have a few patches of grass there. Um, but I just wanted to make that a little bit more prominent and give our viewers somewhere to go. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm doing a dry underpainting on this, um, which basically means I'm using the pastels themselves to create the underpainting. Started off with my darkest tones using a nice deep dark red there and through to a russety red and then through to, to orange and a pale peachy colour for my sky. Now I've done this because I wanted to create a nice warm feeling. It was a lovely summit, summer's day um, and I wanted to create that nice warm feeling so my underpainting, I've used these nice warm tones, um, which are going to go going to show through on the finished painting, just little bits and pieces here and there. Um, so as you can see, I started with my darks, went through to my lights, um, and then I used a piece of pipe foam insulation to rub it all in to give myself a nice soft out of focus background. Um, and so now what I'm doing is I'm coming in and I'm going to re-establish those dark areas um, and start. These are sort of my base layers, really. Um, um, so I'm starting with my darkest tones first. Uh, now I use a few few different colours. Um, I love the I love the mixes that you can get with pastels. Um, so I'm using a few different colours in these dark areas. I started off with a very deep, rich, dark blue, gorgeous colour. Um, um, and it's it's really going to sort of uh, it's really going to help these help give these trees a little bit more feeling in them. Um, sometimes it's quite challenging to paint a very green scene um, because that's all it is is green. So it's nice to get a few different colours underneath everything to sort of. Uh, pop through and make it a little bit more interesting. So as I say I started off with that deep blue as you can see sort of going through all the areas where I can see the dark in the painting or in, in the photograph there. Um, now uh, I'm now coming in with sort of like that deep red that I used in the initial in the initial sort of like layers there. Um, now uh, as you can see it, uh, it it looks a lot darker than you know that that I rubbed in. Um, now obviously because you know I've rubbed in that that first layer and uh, you know that sort of spread itself across the white of the paper so this is why I'm re-establishing these darks here um, I'm now coming in with a sort of um, a richer a richer warmer sort of burgundy red um, get a little bit more color and color in there uh, and now I'm coming in with the with the, with the dark green yes because those trees are actually green so I'm actually using the dark green here and uh, you know as you can see going through all of those dark areas first and basically that's what I'm doing I'm coming through the value scale starting off with my darkest colors and then sort of building up those building up those layers and building up that texture getting lighter as I go 
So now I've picked up sort of like a, a lighter tone of green there. Um, this is a nice warm, soft, soft, warm green, but it's quite dark in its value, value scale. And as you can see, I've sort of, I'm starting to look at where the light's starting to, you know, hit those trees and things. Um, now I'm coming in and I've got some cool greens um, for those sort of uh, the, the field that I'm sort of Inter interjecting in the background there and sort of that mid-ground field there as well. Um, now I'm using sort of uh, in the distant field I'm using cooler greens because as things go further away from you they tend to cool off in their sort of temperature as such. Um, so I'm using cool greens and I've got a couple of different you know a couple of different um, uh, tones there or, or values there in the background so it's not just a, a, a plain strip and again I'm sort of thinking well the light's hitting it from the sort of you know slightly right hand side here it's quite the sun's quite high in the sky when the this photo is taken um so the light's sort of coming up from the from the slightly from the right hand side um and i'm just thinking you know i'm just thinking where the you know where i can't actually see anything i'm thinking where the light is going to be hitting um taking sort of my cues from these front fields um and as i'm coming sort of down the painting coming towards you my greens are getting um warmer in their in their tones um because the sunshine's really hitting these these front two fields here so now I'm going into my sky um, starting in general to ten, uh, skies tend to be a little bit darker at the top uh, getting get you know getting getting lighter as you come down um, and I've, so I've chosen some nice sort of um, violety blues at the top a couple of couple of different couple of different tones here coming then through sort of more to the aquas and then as I come down to the horizon I've chosen that lovely soft gentle um, pale peachy pink there um, and what you can see me doing is I've put a few layers in and I'm blending the um, I'm blending the pastels together we're using the pastels themselves to blend each other and then you saw me just coming in with a little bit of sponge on the end of a blending tool there just to soften it down a little bit um, but going back in uh, with fresh pastels over the top and when I'm doing this blending here unlike the initial layers where I'm really pushing it into the paper so that I can cover all the paper these layers um, any blending I'm doing either with the tool or my fingers is very light I don't want to be crushing those pastels um, uh, so I'm keeping that very very light and soft you know just literally just sort of um, tickling the tickling the pastels together really so that they blend um, and just sort of gently merge into a nice soft gentle sky I don't want anything too busy up there just going to have a few little little paler wispy clouds up there but keeping it very very soft um, so they're sort of like that that was my sort of next layers down really my base layers I call those really where it's uh, I'm giving myself as, as I come through the layers I'm literally going through the painting in several different ways coming through the layers and each time getting a little bit more detailed and adding a little bit more light as I go um, again looking at the reference photos seeing where the light's hitting things um, now I'm up in my tree uh, top of that lovely oak tree there um, now coming up into the sky and making sure that my touch is very very light I like a nice clean sky so making sure my touch is very light up there and I'm just sort of like gently gently teasing the greens out into the skyline uh, coming down again the picture uh, again looking at my reference photo all the time to see where the light's hitting it and just uh, as I say coming coming up the value scale getting a little bit brighter and a little bit lighter as I go um, so as you can see I went through to those the, that backfield again there and that sort of middle middle ground tree line there um, starting again to to think where the light's coming from where it's going to be hitting those trees in the middle there um, now there's a little tiny barn that you can just about make out in the background I've decided not to put that in um, as is the barn in the you know our barn in the corner there um, they're not doing anything in particular for the for the image um, and you can hardly see it so I, ha I haven't worried with those but I have kept those couple of little trees there um, and I've made them perhaps a little bit larger than they are um, but uh, I, I felt that they were nice and um, sort of leading you through um, so what I'm 
doing now is I'm, I'm going to be working. I'm working on that little bank there. Now, there was a little road at the corner that, uh, you know, by that bank. That was a bank that was sort of maybe two or three foot high. Um, and there was a little road at the bottom of it. Again, you can't really see that in the photo. Um, so I'm not putting that in. But I do want to I do want the bank there because, it, you know, to show that those those backfields were a little bit higher. It was just like a gentle roll down and up again of the hills. It really was a very beautiful scene I was lucky enough to wake up to every morning. Very gentle and soft and rolling, very typical of the types of scene you see here in Brittany in France. Um, now you see there in that middle field, I've just gone back in with that russety colour. I felt it was getting a little bit too cool in that, that middle field. Um, so I wanted to warm that up a little bit. So as I came there, I lost a little bit of those uh, those trees there. So I've just made pop those back in, um, and now I'm coming back sort of down the fr down to the front here, making sure I'm getting warmer as I go. Um, having a little look at these shadows that these uh, that these little front bushes are creating. Um, again, you know, obviously referring to the reference photo, using getting as much information as I can from it, and softening things down a little bit. But I'm pretty much there again with these base layers now. I think I've starting to get the feeling um, you know that I that I want to create here um, I want to make sure that I get a nice feeling that these these hills are, are rolling um, and sort of like rolling down away from you and then up again sort of like further in the distance there so uh, you can see me doing that using the colors as I go um, and looking at that reference photo um, to see to see where you're getting those those patches of light hitting it so that's it with the, that sort of like next sort of the layer of base layers as I call them um, and now I really am starting to come in and to do sort of to add add more detail and um, more light to everything and starting to pull this painting together now uh, getting the tree to look a little bit more like it like it actually does. Now, as you can see me now, what I'm doing is I'm just taking out a little bit of pastel because um, I want to put in some sky holes there at the back here where that you can see in the in the reference image. Um, now, I've just taken out a little bit of pastel because I've got a bit of, bit green there, and I want my, I want it to to look like sky behind it. So I just took a little bit out with a little dry paintbrush there, just took out a little bit there and popped in my sky. Um, now, make sure when you're doing your sky that you you don't go sort of like below your horizon line. Um, you know, because obviously you, you wouldn't see the sky lower down in the tree. So make sure you, you're you aware of where your horizon line is. You're coming along there. Um, but as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm trying, I'm looking at the reference photo again, trying to get a few more of those, uh, the, the feeling of that tree. Now it's up to you, you know, how, how much, you know, how close to the photo reference you want to go with regard to the trees. Um, but I thought these were particularly lovely trees. You know, you've got that beautiful oak and then that unusual sort of, I think it's a yew, yew tree that lost its shape there um, somewhere over the over the time it's lost a few branches but uh, I love the way it was kind of pointing you through up to the scene sort of like saying come and have a look at the background here um, so you know I've gone fairly close to the reference photo on these trees um, just sort of uh, trying to look at their shapes and uh, and and you know what 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 kind of shapes they're that they're, they're creating and and trying to you know as I say being fairly close to it but if you want to be looser with your trees obviously you know it's totally up to you how close to the, any reference photo you, you wish to go um, but as this was kind of like a little personal scene to me this one's probably going to go off my wall um, you know it's got nice happy memories I wanted it to feel like that particular scene if you fancy having a go at painting this little scene I'll pop the uh, reference um, the uh, link for the reference photo down below for you um, so you're welcome to have a little go um, and if you're interested in watching the full length version of this where obviously I, I it's, it's not time lapsed and I paint at a speed that hopefully you can follow along with. Uh, the full tutorial is about an hour and a half and uh, I've got it over on my website available as an individual tutorial and on my new Patreon page. So uh, please do come and, uh, you know, come and join me if you fancy sort of like uh, really learning um, how I'm doing things and, and, you know, where I'm taking the picture. And I explain as I go along uh, in a lot more detail, obviously, what I'm doing and, and why I'm doing it. But there's only a limited time in these little time lapses. So uh, I <laughs> I can't give you all of the information here, but as I say, come and join me over on Patreon or pop on over to my website if you fancy having a go. 
So, as you can see, the painting's really starting to come together now. So I'm just literally going around doing all these last sort of finishing touches um, just to just, just just sort of like add those little last little details, um, making sure that I've got all everything, you know, where I want it to, to, to go and the feeling that I want to create from this little painting. So I'll let you watch these last couple of minutes of me finishing off now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I've hoped you've learned a little something along the way. Um, I would love to see you so do consider joining me over and on on patreon and if you've enjoyed this little video and you'd like to see sort of more from me here on youtube um please give me a thumbs up and uh, do subscribe i'd love some subscribers to help my brand new channel grow so thanks once again so much for watching hopefully i'll see you next time and uh, in the meantime happy painting mm -hmm.